I think it certainly brings a new element of strategic risk into the European and global political environment. We had thought we had settled after the wars of the 20th century the basic questions about the territorial integrity of sovereign states. I can remember only one instance before now where one member state of the United Nations uh, invaded another member state of the United Nations and that was Saddam Hussein invading Kuwait. And now the second instance of the uh, annexation of Crimea by Russia uh, in uh, indirect, in other words there wasn't a hot war but uh, mm-hmm. in a very military style operation uh, with uh, great political pressure, expediency and opportunism, uh, this was done. It violates the fundamental principles of the United Nations Charter. It violates the values and principles of the Council of Europe. It violates the principles of OSCE on territorial integrity. It violates the principles of the Helsinki Final Act. And all of these were the substantial civilizational advances of Europe's 20th century. So this is a most disturbing development. It's creeping Uh, consequences now in Lugansk, Donetsk and other parts of uh, eastern and southern Ukraine is deeply disturbing. I think it reminds us that the old narrative uh, being laid to rest a little bit in political rhetoric of Europe as a peace-giving institution uh, somehow being a thing of the past, worthy of a Nobel Prize but belonging to the history books, this is a sharp reminder uh, that history hasn't gone away. Uh, Back in the mid-1990s, one of the conservative uh, academics in the United States, Francis Fukuyama, wrote a book called The End of History, uh, the hypothesis that, you know, the Western capitalist model had had won. And now he has written other books revising some of that since then. Uh, But history has come up and bitten us again and reminded us that some old ghosts uh, that Europe had hoped we had laid to rest haven't gone away. Yes, so the big questions for me on this... um, can we avoid slipping backwards to the old balance of power logic, uh, which was uh, a zero-sum game, no winners, all losers? Uh, Or can we find a positive-sum game? Can we make our dialogue with Ukraine and eventually with Russia if we can find the terms and conditions that are appropriate that respect Ukraine, first of all? Can we make Ukraine a bridge or will it be a border? And if it is a bridge or a border, will it be whole and complete or broken and in chaos? And one doesn't know the answer to that, and that is deeply disturbing. And I would like to see the people who want to lead Europe for the next five years, irrespective of their party, tell me what is their ambition on this front? What is their ambition for European foreign policy? What is their ambition for European energy policy so that we free ourselves to make some choices we may not be free to make today in terms of policy reaction. And I would like to know that because it matters to Europeans. Uh, It matters to Ukrainians who stood and made a stand for a Europe of values, for a civilizational choice. And I would like to see now who wants to lead Europe telling me what he or she believes should be done on this.